Hello everybody and welcome back to the Game of Thrones Civilization 5 AI Deathmatch Free For All. This is part 8 and I am Alzebo HD. Welcome back everybody. In the last episode, the Tollies of River Run have been overrun themselves. They are basically a stone's throw away from complete, I guess, desecration. They are about to be overthrown from their capital over here at River Run and more or less likely going to be taken out by either the Lannisters or the, I guess, uh, the Vale, House uh, Aaron of the Vale, which is currently actually in the hands of Peter Baelish. Now, I know that the TV show of Game of Thrones is starting back up soon. I believe it is going to be released the day that this is finally submitted to YouTube. And I do apologize once again for the two-week delay between this episode and the last one. But this uh, is going to be a great episode for you guys today. It's going to be a bit shorter, about 20 minutes. But this is just because I can, I'm able to upload more videos if they are a bit shorter in length. Tell me what you guys think about this. But anyways, a quick recap in the last episode. Renly Baratheon of the Stormlands has managed to take back the city of Seaguard over here to the southwest. Of course, his former city of Haystack Hall to the due south, or rather due south of King's Landing, is uh, been taken by the Tyrells which are in a very, very dominant position. Just going to go ahead and fly over kind of like the Tyrell Westeros area here. So again, the Tyrells of Highgarden, they have just absolutely gone crazy. They've taken over most, if not all, of central and southwestern Westeros, including a colony in the north of Tumbleton, which is going to be interesting. Again, my nose or my uh, voice might be nasally. I said my nose. Of course, my nose is nasally. So I do apologize um, if this causes, I guess, problems for the audio quality of this video. Unfortunately, I have to breathe out of my mouth and speaking out of my mouth while commentating uh, and breathing out of the same mouth. It's, just, it's really hard, guys. So I'm going to try my best here. Um, again, so. Where do we leave off? Currently, there is a war in the north between um, Winterfell. That is to say... God, what is this guy's name? You know, I've forgotten everybody's name already. This is crazy. The King of the North, uh, Rob Stark. There we go, Rob Stark. Is currently leading a war against uh, the Greyjoys. Who is... Yeah, Balon Greyjoy. There we go. Once I watch these, I guess, episodes, these new episodes for Game of Thrones, it's going to come back to me, all these character names. But it's been a while, so I do feel bad that I'm neglecting the, the lore here, but it's okay. Let's go ahead and continue right where we left off. Of course, we do have a war between the North and the Iron Islands. A war between... I believe Stannis Baratheon, this red faction over here, and Peter Baelish... And maybe even a war still between Rinley and... Let's just go and pull it up really fast. Because, you know, again, I don't know exactly everything that's going on right now. Because it's been a while since I've done this particular series. So let's go ahead and pull up the... Not the military overview. The, let's see... Diplomacy overview. Right. So getting Balon at war with the North, that's okay. The Tollies are at war with the Reach, the Stormland, and the Stormlands, okay? So that means that Ridley Baratheon is attacking them, as is the Reach, which is... Who's the Reach? I think that refers to Tyrells. Okay, so Tyrells are still at war with the Tollies. Very, very good. Uh, yeah, that's what it is. Okay, just making sure. Because sometimes the faction names are not the same as the kingdom name, which makes it very, very confusing. For those of us like myself who are not very well versed in the lore of Game of Thrones. So again, uh, everything else seems about normal. Right, so let's go ahead and end the turn and get started here. So something to note that I did not bring up in the past episode is that the armies of Dorne, that is to say House Martell. See, Martell and Tyrell, it's a bit, it's a bit confusing for me because these guys over here are the Tyrells. These guys over here are the Martells. I don't know why George Martin made, you know, these names so damn similar, but it's really, really confusing. So anyways, uh, House Martell, that is to say these desert folk over here of Dorne, are basically amassing an army. And I don't know exactly where they're going to go. My guess is... Actually, maybe into the Tyrell lands, because the Tyrell have very, uh, I guess, like, like loosely defended territory. Of course, they've committed too far into the north against the Tollies, and now that they've done so, their army is severely weakened. So it'll be interesting to see if the uh, Martells of Dorne take advantage of the Tyrells of Highgarden. So again, let's go to end the turn and see what happens here. <sighs> 
All right, so, so far, River Run is still absolutely in tatters. Uh, nobody's really making any inroads into taking the city for themselves because of the 40 defense score of the capital, which may or may not be the largest amount of defense score of the entire game, even more so than King's Landing. So when you have a city that's more defendable than King's Landing, you're going to have some problems. We'll see how the Tullys manage to react uh, to this onslaught that's currently taking place. So again, we're going to end the turn. Kind of watching out for the Martells here. The Tullys have made peace with the Tyrells of High Garden. Very, very good. And it almost seems like the Martells of Dorne are either at war with Ridley Baratheon or currently getting some type of open border agreement through his territory. And I don't think they're at war because they haven't been bombarded. So they must be on the war path towards somebody else. So we'll keep our eye out over them. In other news in the North, past few episodes, uh, Red Harbor and Lordsport, both uh, kind of Iron Islands territories, the Greyjoy territories, uh, have been annexed by Robb Stark, in addition to Tin Towers. So basically all of these cities that have been founded on the coast, colonies of the Greyjoys have been taken. They now belong to the King of the North. Very, very sad for them. <laughs> but again, in the East and in the North... <sighs> God, my nose, my nose is so damn nasally. I gotta apologize here, because uh, this has got to be annoying for you guys, and of course for me. But anyways, uh, I digress. In the east and in the north, um, Mance Radar, the king beyond the wall, and the king below the wall, it would appear, is continuing to also colonize the north. So no doubt this will draw attention with the southern uh, lords, including the king of the north itself, himself, Rob Stark. But again, nothing of note is happening, so we're going to continue our turn. Okay, keeping our eye on the Martells here. Who are making their way through the Stormlands. But where are they going, we don't know. We're going to find out soon enough. So Edmure Tully has reached the Seven Kingdoms Age. I do believe this is the first person to reach that. We're going to go and check it out really fast. Victory progress. Nope. Where the hell do I go over here? Do I go into diplomacy? Relationships. It tells you somewhere. Okay, here we go. Seven Kingdoms of Age. Yeah, Rob is the Seven Kingdoms of Age. Edmure is there. So only the North and Edmure are currently there. So they're ahead of everybody else in technology. Very, very interesting. So as I said before, uh, Dorne, House Martell of Dorne, was on the warpath. We didn't know if they were going to attack the Tyrells or the Stormlands. It looks like they have turned around and backstabbed the Stormlands. We'll see if, uh, you know, Ridley Baratheon is able to hold up here. My guess is no. My guess is that the Southern Lords of Dorne are about to take the city of Seaguard and press their advantage to the capital, which is, of course, Storm's End. Very, very bloody battle uh, ahead of us here. Why don't we go ahead and enable something interesting we're gonna go ahead and do uh we're gonna turn off quick combat just so we can see the battle over here give me a minute to uh kind of stop uh the comment uh, comments just a little bit i gotta blow my nose over here off of the microphone because i know this is bothering me probably bothering you guys too we're gonna go ahead and let the fight play out and i'll be back in about a minute All right, so as we can see, uh, returning back here again, uh, basically there are quite a bit of uh, bloody struggle here, bloody struggles here, both in the north with um, Stannis Baratheon against Peter Baelish, and in the south, of course, the battle for Seaguard. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to disable the combat because, you know, again, this is just for when I was taking a quick break. So we're going to go ahead and re-enable that. And again, I should be able to edit out all of the uh, nasal sounds that I'm making from my nose and my mouth. Again, this is probably the reason why I haven't been making videos uh, regularly. It's very much a pain in the ass to record videos when you can't breathe out of your nose again. So I do apologize for that nasal uh, sort of quality coming 
for my microphone and my mouth. Uh, right, so the city of Seaguard is about to fall, about to fall to the armies of Dorne. Let's go back up to the north and see if Stannis is holding out okay over here in Sharp Point and Claw Isle. So far, so good. It seems to be because he is able to effectively defend this territory to the fact that it doesn't have any land connections into uh, Peter Baelish's territory. Now, if we were willing to bet here, I'd be willing to bet that Stannis will make peace with Peter Baelish, but on terms more favorable to Peter. He'll probably give either Sharp Point or Claw Isle, maybe even both of them to Peter Baelish, who is an expanding power in the northeast and central parts of, uh, I guess, southern Westeros. Going back down here to the Sea Guard uh, frontier over here, the frontier between, uh, I guess, Ridley Baratheon's forces and Dorne. The city of Sea Guard is about to fall. Uh, my previous, I guess, estimation or prediction in the previous episode was that Ridley Baratheon would be able to retake his empire. Uh, well, yeah, that's not going to happen. This is uh, kind of the last nail in the coffin of Ridley Baratheon. Of course, the city of Seaguard will fall next turn. Let's see how Stannis Baratheon is holding up over here. So far, so good. Of course, there are some, uh, I guess, Veil uh, infantry that are landing on his territory, but it's not phasing Stannis one bit whatsoever. Always a good thing for him. Over here outside of River Run, it is a complete nightmare for the Tullys. Excuse me, I'm going to edit that one out of the uh, final clip here. <laughs> Probably you shouldn't have heard that. Uh, right, so the Tullys are getting absolutely destroyed over here outside of River Run. Nothing's new over there. And outside of Seaguard, this is the final turn before they are annexed by Dorne. I misspoke too soon. It seems like the Dornish lords, the Martells, have decided to skip Seaguard for whatever reason. Sometimes, again, the AI is incredibly stupid in this game. But they're just dancing back and forth, allowing, of course, Ridley Baratheon to reinforce his men. But I think this is finally the turn where it will fall. The city of Seaguard now belongs to House Martell of Dorne. Very interesting. This is actually the third territory outside of God's Grace and Salt Shore that is not in a desert biome. So they're expanding the north, getting very, very close. Almost a uh, eagle stone throw away from King's Landing. Over here, the city of Sharp Point being besieged by... Uh, Stannis Baratheon is under siege once again, and it looks like the city of Riverrun, the Tully city of Riverrun, is also under siege. Let's go ahead and take a look uh, at all three if we can, although we're going to favor the north for this particular turn. Right, so... Now that that's said and done, again, Storm's End is in a very precarious situation. Of course, Ridley Baratheon is holding on tenaciously to his last, I guess, domain here in Westeros. He only holds on to his capital. Uh, again, very, very interesting development. While at the same time, the Tully city of Riverrun is still getting plundered to the ground. All of their surrounding territories are being burned and pillaged. You would not want to be in the Riverlands right now, that's for sure. Let's go back up to the north with the fight between Stannis Baratheon and Peter Baelish. Whoa! So the city of Sharp Point just took a lot of damage from basically some trebuchets that belonged to Peter Baelish. We'll see if the city itself is going to fall. My guess is no, but let's uh, see again if uh, this is a possibility here. So the city of Sharp Point is under siege. Uh, unfortunately, though, it doesn't seem like Peter Baelish has any melee units, with the exception of his Mountain Knights. We'll see if he opts to attack the uh, city of Sharp Point uh, by disembarking. We will, of course, see a combat penalty to his attack if he does so. But going back down here to the south, it seems like the Martells of Dorne are building up a navy as their army is being absolutely beaten senseless through the mountain passes to the southwest of Storm's End. Over here in the north, again, the war between the Greyjoys and the Starks is inconclusive, as always. In fact, it seems like the Starks are content to just let the Greyjoys run it out on the Iron Islands, and the Greyjoys are content to stop harassing uh, the Starks by settling their land and territory. While at the same time, Mance Radar is still trying to beat down the gates of Castle Black. 
Some things never change. Let's go back down to the south. City of Sharp Point in a very precarious situation. Let's see if it falls. The city of Sharp Point has been taken by Peter Baelish. Very, very interesting developments. Of course, this is a city that I thought was previously invincible, and Peter Baelish is expanding at a very, very rapid rate. Let's go ahead and pull up the scoreboard over here and take a look. So Peter Baelish is not in the lead, but he's getting ever, ever higher. Uh, of course, currently, who is the lead? Well, Rob Stark is, with a massive 766-point, uh, I guess, uh, gap here. Whereas the shittiest house is mine, and of course, the house that only has a nuclear submarine. <laughs> if we have nuclear power, though. Whereas the second weakest would definitely be Stannis Baratheon. So we're going to keep our eye on the scoreboard as the game progresses. Let's go ahead and check it out, how the battle for the Stormlands is currently going. So far, so good. So Traitor Town, where is Traitor Town? Which one is that? Is that Old Town? No. I'm guessing it's probably Heron Hall. No. Is it King's Landing? It is. So, Stannis has made a declaration of war, or rather King's Landing, led by Joffrey Baratheon, has declared war in Stannis, trying to take this opportunity to take Dragonstone for himself, perhaps. And they've also declared war on the Tollies. King's Landing, wow. Always involved in Westerosi politics. Let's go ahead and turn and see how the fight between the Vale and the Stormlands, or rather the Capital Lands, the Crown Lands, is going. That is to say, Stannis Baratheon's territory. So far, uh, it's basically going as it did previously. A lot of status quo going on over here. And in the south, it looks like really Baratheon might be able to make a uh, offensive back into taking Seaguard. Of course, the armies of the Martells, that is to say the armies of Dorne, are being... Basically ransacked over here. And beaten into the ground. But I do apologize. I'm literally having an allergic meltdown right now. So I need to go ahead and end the episode here. Again, this was about 20 minutes long. The next one will be a bit longer. I'm going to try to find some uh, type of, uh, you know, at least temporary cure for uh, my uh, nasal woes over here. That way I'll be able to commentate on longer videos without feeling like absolute shit. So again, guys, I hope you enjoyed this episode. Stay tuned for the next one. Of course, it will be out very, very soon in a few days. Uh, and again, I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. And stay tuned for the next one that will have a bit of a better quality. <laughs> Thanks again, guys. See you on the next episode.